going to talk to you. I teach uh, fashion design at the university, and I'm going to talk to you about upcycled fashion today. So at different levels, from the very beginning right through to uh, um, a student project that we've done, and it's on show here today. So it's just a kind of really quick run through of that project, but an introduction to what upcycled or recycled clothing is. Now, there's lots of different words that we use for upcycled um, clothing. Recycled, it started off as recycled. We now use the term upcycled, which is exactly the same thing, but what we're doing is we're using uh, the terminology as a way of um, saying that we're taking products that have got a lesser value and making it into something um, of a higher value is what upcycled means. Okay? So basically, it's been around for a long time, and I'm going to reiterate quite a lot of what Myra and everybody else has said today. Like Myra's kind of talked you through that kind of make do and mend thing. Um, so basically, upcycling or recycling clothing has been around for quite a long time. In fact, a very long time. Because we've all been there. I mean, some of you are really young. But um, we have been uh, just kind of recycling by handing things into charity shops or just passing things on to your friends or wearing your sister's clothes or your cousin's clothes. So we've all been handing down clothes for generations, actually. So it's not a completely new thing. We've been altering and we've been mending clothes for a long time. So it's been around for a long time. For people that are quite new to it and want to get into fashion design, um, basically there's lots of different ways that we can be introduced to fashion and clothing through just studying an interest in fashion design, crafts, it can be home dressmaking, it can be social media, it could be your first experience of that, or there's lots of opportunities to go to classes and courses. All are important starting points for people who want to be involved in working with clothes um, and design on a small or grand scale. So it doesn't matter if you're a small kind of individual person or a big business. Um, we are learning from different sources. It can be taught by family members, it can be taught by school teachers. It's all completely relevant and we all start somewhere. We can be taught how to sew or knit or crochet. All these old fashioned skills hopefully are still being taught somewhere um, in the world. Hopefully. We do a little bit of it here at the university. Inspiration nowadays can be found very, very easily, particularly on uh, social media and Pinterest. Does anybody here use Pinterest? Anybody look for inspiration? Anybody addicted to Pinterest? Well, that's what we recommend to our students because it's just so easily accessible now compared to what it used to be when we had to go to libraries and look in books and maybe occasional television programmes. But it's, it's just instant and it's so easily available. Um, and hopefully it will bring up that resurgence in interest of um, old-fashioned crafts and skills. So yes, we've got tons and tons of this kind of inspiration. Hopefully it will inspire people to get a sewing machine out and just cut and kind of montage and collage all the old garments together and just change things by adding buttons and trims and old kind of old fashioned embroidery stitches, things like that. So there's lots of ideas there on how to actually upcycle and embellish and change old garments in your wardrobe. So this is all sustainable, this is all upcycling, this is all good stuff. Instructions are there, right down to the minute detail and ideas of how to do it. So we share ideas and methods and skills online now. But what we're looking at here is customisation as well as fixing and mending. We're actually able to take old garments and make them look quite interesting and individual. And like I say, the we're not short of inspiration, it's all there. So what do we do with our old jewellery, our old, old clothes? Um, basically anything we can get our hands on and feel inclined to be creative. Anybody here do this type of thing? Well, as you can see from the student's exhibition up the back, we're kind of showing you how it can be done as well. We'll talk you through that. Okay, so we've all watched the great sewing bee on TV. The sales of sewing machines in John Lewis have went up 22% since the programme began, which is a good thing. 
Sewing's becoming a growth industry again, so it's kind of died away and now it's growing due to certain kind of craft programmes on television and hopefully social media. The crafting industry, which means people who like to do crafts, has grown and is worth now 3.1 billion to the UK economy, which is quite a nice kind of boost to the economy. We've got bloggers who are um, sharing and inspiring. We've got repair cafes like Myra was talking about. We've got all these nice community groups. We've actually got places and spaces we can go and get involved in the, the kind of uh, activity and enjoy being creative. So if you're not part of one of these groups, it's quite a good idea maybe to start one up and do it as not just an activity to be creative, but actually to socialise and be part of a community as well. So that's all good. There's a nice article here in The Guardian about how we're all learning to repair clothes again. Obviously, our awareness of sustainability is growing. Traditional skills are coming back. They are now becoming less of something that is seen as old-fashioned and is coming back into being quite modern and fashionable and on trend again. So we teach our students how to do these things from first year onwards and hopefully show them how to take something that is really quite a slow fashion, slow traditional process and make it into something much more modern and fashionable. So we've got all these home kind of projects, handmade, homemade types of projects that can actually be perceived as cool or fashion or trendy or luxurious or glamorous. Well, can it be? It can. And we've got some nice examples here of the types of designers that have brought it um, into more of a kind of high fashion and luxury market. We've got Rai Kawakubo, we've got Martin Margiela, we've got Yunya Watanabe, we've got Victor Rolf, we've got lots of nice designers. So along with looking at these kind of homemade, handmade projects, there's lots of nice inspiration and examples that have been actually happening for a long, long time. Now, a lot of you won't know this, but 35 years ago, a group of designers actually started questioning how fashion and clothing should or could be. Um, they are known as the Japanese avant-gardist group, and Rai Kawakubo of Comme de Garçons was one of the main influencers in that group. So this is just an example of how she kind of questioned and looked at fashion and how... Um, we should be questioning how things can be worn. So taking garments inside out and upside down and being quite playful and creative with the way things can look with a very upcycled aesthetic. And this is the main point of the student brief here today is that the, the look is clearly upcycled. So old garments reconfigured and kind of montaged or collaged together, the displacement of pockets, the displacement of sleeves and collars, a very playful and creative approach. And this is all comme de garçon. So as you can see, it went back 35 years, but it's actually still around. It's still being used today on the catwalks. This creative and artistic approach to um, looking at fashion, questioning clothing and garments and the shapes that we wear, a very, um, very non-traditional look. And this is actually just a wee slide that I popped in here to show how that relates to the high street today. So it might look like too artistic and too unwearable, but actually the high street has now caught up and is adopting these styles and they're actually becoming, um, there are lots of wearable and fashionable versions of these catwalk looks. So this is Comme de Garçon now. The style, again, is still around from, I would say, at least the last 35 years and is still dominant on the catwalks as being a kind of punk philosophy of questioning what fashion can be. So more designers and how they've used a kind of upcycled look, upcycled aesthetic, has been something quite controversial. 
Can it be high fashion? Can it be glamorous? And can it be luxury? This is Martin Margiela, who um, has actually looked very much at the kind of deconstruction way of working with garments, taking them apart. It's not just in fashion, but it's happened in architecture and lots of other different fields as well. So the displacement of very traditional elements and being playful with them on different areas of the outfit. So it's not just about up upcycling, but creating it as its own aesthetic. It is luxury, but it is clearly a look of customization at the top end of the market. Couture with a cheeky edge, it's lively, it's raw, and it's dynamic. All the designers at the top end of the market are actually now adopting this as a new sustainable style. So it's very much collaged. It's like cutting and pasting bits of garments and putting them back together in a very artistic and creative way. Now, we asked the students to come up with some fashion designs which were based on upcycled objects, so upcycled old garments or any kind of things that you see lying around. Now, there's a lot of student projects happened like this in the past, but quite often they can be quite disposable. They're not necessarily of high-end quality. So we've got paper hug cups, we've got spoons here. We looked at how we could actually make fashion using um, upcycled objects, but make it a little bit more durable than this. There's lots of new companies embracing this aesthetic. This is our project that we worked on. So basically, it's up the back. We've got four lovely students up there ready to answer your questions on anything that you'd like to know about how they got to their final results. So I'm going to talk you through their design brief and then leave you to have a look at their, their work. We called it Fashion Unpicked, and it's a third-year level module. So what they were asked to do was uh, design a collection of three outfits working around a theme of contrast, they were allowed to pick any source material or any starting point at all to explore contrasts as a theme. So contrasts could relate also to the materials that they wanted to use. They were asked to, to use a combination of old and new fabrics, but mainly to incorporate an upcycled aesthetic, which means that it had to look like it was up, something had been upcycled. They were asked to also look at um, texture, form and colour as their basic kind of approaches that you'll see in their sketchbooks. The, mar the target market they were asked to look at would be craft couture, so there's a quite a high level of handmade and craftsmanship uh, to be involved, incorporating an element of handmade aimed at the luxury market. So this is one example of one of the sketchbooks. The starting point is just to go out and find inspiration absolutely anywhere. This student, Ewan McDougall, looked at Gaudi's architecture in Barcelona and picked um, the church, the Sagrada Familia, to actually photograph and draw and look at. He looked through different areas of that for inspiration for form, which is three-dimensional exploration of the forms and shapes from his source material, and colour palettes and texture. They then take their colour, form and texture and incorporate it into techniques and fashion design ideas. These are um, a mixture of hand drawing and CAD drawings. And then that's his final idea, which is presented on a final board to the class and then made up. And this is the final kind of outcome of that process. These are some other garments that the, the students have done that were in our fashion show. This is just balls from a, a play pit, which has been used as a kind of embellishment. And this outfit is up uh, here, um, Laura Perry's um, embellishment of uh, labels and beads and hand stitching. So creativity is the ultimate economic resource. Student work is on show today. The, these are the names of the students and they're all there ready to show you their project. Thank you.